All right, we're starting the stream. I'm about to check the stream health, and it's receiving content, so we're starting the stream finally. Thank you guys for the technical difficulties. The laptop, I have deep sixed. It looks like this stream's health should be considerably better. I am running an octocore AMD chip with an RX 580 that is basically sitting underneath my feet and everything's rigged up through it so i have a pass-through device the live gamer so on my main pc over here is the ryzen 1700 and that's what you guys see on the top so you'll see bio settings you'll see pass-through you'll see the entire installation you'll see me get to do the installation media the whole ball of wax in this live stream uh, we'll see how it goes i'm sure there'll be dead spots something will happen but it's gonna be great Thank you. Let me know on the microphone game. Let me go ahead and turn that down and let me know if there's any other settings here, guys. Um, let me grab my compressor and change those filters. Output gain. Pull that back to about a 10. All right. How's that? Is the microphone gain a lot better now? We shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, redlining now. All right, let me know if the sound or video goes off. Like I said, um, my main ultra wide now is connected to this new PC, so I have complete chat controls, streaming controls, all that. And then up here, what you guys see is the main PC, and it's just connected to the 24 inch that's streamed to you all. So here we go. Yeah, <laughs> they totally are total OS. They are way more simple, and I wish this was a lot simpler with just the laptop, but hey, at least it looks good now. It looks like you guys can hear me and see me. Let's do this thing. So first off, I'm going to throw this in, and we're going to make our installation media. So this was a PF Sense box, so let's go ahead and wipe it out. Um, all right. Actually, I think I can just pull up Etcher. Let's do that. Ah. Uh. So we're gonna make the live USB right now. I'm gonna go KDE, just because I tried Mate on the other one. I just don't like uh, Mate or however you wanna say it. So we're gonna go KDE on this guy and Flash. <laughs> yeah, um, why this is flashing, one thing I do wanna check is my f stab i need to make sure i back it up because i have a bunch of devices actually connected here which i'll go ahead and show you guys that this is my f stab file and we'll go full screen I love everybody's opinions. KDE is the way to go. Don't use KDE on Debian. <laughs> That's awesome. I have Monte as well, so we can use either or. It does not matter. Um, I like KDE just because it has a bunch of stuff baked in, and I have a ton of stuff to load. We're going to be loading OBS, Steam, uh, DXVK, all the... We're not using any custom drivers. I'm not going to use the official AMD drivers. I'm going to be using Mesa, all open source, of course. I don't really like using those. Yeah, XFCE is really nice as well. Um, KDE out of the box should be a little bit better. I, I usually flip-flop back and forth between XFCE and KDE depending on the day, um, but we'll see. All right, so we're good. We can actually wipe out this system that we're looking at right now. 
This is the main system. I believe I have almost everything backed up. Um, I need to pull up my next cloud just to make sure. Because uh, I didn't back up. I like to grab fstab and then I should be able to drop my home directory and all that and then install it over this one. If I install it on the wrong drive though, it's gonna be a real big sad face because that's where all my data resides. So uh, hopefully we don't do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy my fstab. So let's go over to here and we'll grab fstab. All right, just for you, David, here you go. Let's see. There you go, man. Ran your command. <laughs> uh, you should have done this. That's an even better command. All right, let's uh, let's grab fstab. I'm gonna copy it, put that in my next cloud, just because I want a backup of that. And I should be able to attach my home directory, um, my one terabyte partition over as well. Um, here is my actual drives and everything we're looking at in this system. This is uh, a lot of drives, so sometimes the system mixes up the NVMe drives. I have three NVMe drives in here, so it really can play hell with a lot of things. All right. It usually takes a while for Gparted to pull up here. So I'm gonna let's move my ugly mug down a little bit so you guys can see this. So here's all the drives. We have two NVMe's right at the top. I have a uh, six terabyte SDA, that's a GPT drive. Uh, SDB, that's another, it's not a, quite an NVMe drive, that is an actual, um, it's an, an M.2, but it's not NVMe, so it's like a slower speed. It's a Samsung 860, I believe. And then we have the SDC, that is gonna be the actual thing we're gonna wipe out this system with. So we have to pay special caution to not wipe out this one and this one and one of these. I will we'll have to figure it out on the fly. So let's look at both of these. This is my home directory. Right now it's NVMe one in one. And this guy is the boot. So what I like to do on this is just kind of look at what the BLK ID looks like and we should be able to determine which one not to do. So NVMe one is our home directory. This is the one we don't want to wipe out. So remember 445, <laughs> because with this many drives and you're formatting your main system, it is super easy to really mess things up bad. Uh, so I'm pretty good with numbers, so I think I can remember all this. Uh, we'll we'll find out. So let's go ahead and start formatting and start our loading process here, guys. Um, one more thing I wanted to check real fast is the EFI partition, because this is UEFI. Um, so the UEFI partition that we need is gonna be 2772 P1. All right, we're good. Let's reboot and see what we get. See if I can catch the boot menu here. Ah, 12, come on, boot menu. Ah, all right, so now I just did the UEFI video. Remember what I said, if you wanna do an NVMe, or I'm sorry, no, a UEFI 
boot loader, you have to boot into UEFI installation media. If I did this top one, it would be using the legacy boot media and that legacy one would only allow me to do that. So I kind of want to do UEFI just because it's a little faster and I can do kind of cool graphics on the bootloader. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So we'll do the graphical installer. Why not? All right. Here we go. Debian 9. Let's hopefully we don't mess anything up. <laughs> All right, configure network. So a lightning strike happened or we had a power surge and one of my network cards in here is no bueno. And I want to say it was the Intel one, the built-in one that broke on me. So I'm going to just try the Qualcomm uh, Ethernet one first. So hopefully it's the one that works. I believe it is though. So with this many drives, when it comes to the partitioning scheme, I'm going to really hurt myself if I do the automatic one. It's going to be super ugly. So we can't do automatic. So you guys will see an expert mode or advanced. I don't know what they call it in Debian uh, on the partitioning scheme. So we'll call this Debian 10. Domain name blank. Root password, try to make it something long. Don't make it something four digits like I just did. Uh, name of user, Titus, Titus. All right, I am central time. We're gonna detect the disks. We should be the partitioning of the disks. All right. Now this is where we can definitely mess things up. So we want to do a manual. <laughs> All right, this should be fun. All right, let's configure. This looks different. So let's see. All right, this right here is our home directory. This is our bootloader. This is what we need to wipe out. So let's go ahead and hit continue. Looks weird. Erase data. Yep, no going back now. Um, I'm going to be using Debian Buster. So it's like uh, in between stable and testing when Buster gets released, which is Debian 10. Um, I'll actually be on the stable version. So it kind of starts out as testing or the end of a testing cycle and then it moves to stable. So I get all the new greatest, latest and greatest. And then I'm on stable for, you know, after a couple months, I should be all unstable because this is my main PC. I don't want to be doing this again just because this is a kind of a pain in the butt. All right, we're not gonna write all zeros. Let's just go ahead and do this. All right, continue. Uh, go back. Back, all right. So with this, I believe we can just hit continue. Because all the partitioning is pretty much done. I don't really change the partitioning tables here based on what I'm looking at. Um, so let's go ahead and hit continue. Done setting up. 
No overview. Figure select partition, modify settings. Okay, I gotta modify the mount point in here. Where the hell's the mount point? Oh, there we go. Root, rootable off. I don't really want to, I'll just believe this is formatted. I don't think I need to go through all of it, so let's... I don't know, you know, we should probably be thorough. Let's go erase data. I don't know. Yeah. I usually do this from command prompt. I've done Arch so many times now that I would just do a make fs, which... Um, this one's like writing a bunch of zeros. I don't like to do the long, long version of it, but I did the graphics, so that's why I'm kind of sitting here debating. I guess let's, yeah, uh, it should be fine. I don't, I don't think it'll. Ah, uh, let's go ahead. I, I don't want to mess with it. Don't want to chance it. We'll just sit here and let it write the zeros. It has a format? Ah, crap. Let me cancel it then. All right, we'll just hit done. All right, and then this one, we're going to ho. <laughs> Go ahead and set it up. We use this as EFI system partition. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Ah. EFI system partition, bootable on. Yeah, okay. So EFI set there, that, and this one. This is my home directory, but I probably don't want to set this up in here just yet. Well, maybe I do. Oh, heck with it. Let's do it. Yeah, you guys are going to witness awesomeness here. Um, home directory. Okay. I think this is good. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Most of my data resides on this segment right here. So I'm going to leave this alone. My home directory, that's the only thing I'm worried about that it might format. But I don't think it will. We'll see. Um, no, I don't want to do swap. All right, NVMe zero and one, let's do it. Mount of file system failed.
Oh, with that, we should be good. No, I don't want flop drive. Yes. Continue. Oh, man. All right. I think we got to go back and just let this go through. I canceled this during the formatting process, and I think that's causing that error. I think we can just erase data on this partition and be good. Uh, I have 16 gigs in memory, so I really don't need a swap partition. I'm almost wishing I did the <laughs> the command line version of this. This is kind of confusing how they word things on the GUI. I don't really like it. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I probably should have just deleted the partition. I agree, Naveen. Look at that. Everyone's saying delete it, delete, delete. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's delete it. Everyone's saying delete. Let's go back. We'll delete it, and then we'll create it. Create a new. Oh, I did it as an LVM. I guess it's fine. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm about to ban a Total OS Daily, man. Windows machine updated faster than this. Blasphemy. Heresy. Alright. Oh. Right. All right, there we go, guys. Oh. <sighs> yeah, big pod. I saw that. Uh, the did the LVM. Go back to partition. One hour later on the stream, has he has he successfully partitioned his disk yet? I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, let's let's do this. All right, now we're installing. Let's see. It's <laughs> awesome. It has failed to install. Please try again from the menu. What? All right, let's just... God bless. What in the world, man?
It's only when you do it on this kind of system that this happens. Ah, uh, all right. This is good. The only thing I can think of is maybe, maybe it just wants a swap space. It has to have it or some crap. Um, uh, let's just delete this. Fine, stupid Debian. Right, home partition. It wants to do this logical. That's crap. No, I'm not going to do this. I don't want to do this. Just uh, no. Two thirty three. Oh, what the hell? Uh, it doesn't even have a swap in here. What the hell? I don't really want to use swap, but this thing keeps failing on install. I mean, <laughs> what else am I going to do? Like, look, everything looks good. Everything's primary. I'm not using LVM. I have the home directory, which actually this is now not set. So let's go ahead. Set it as home. Okay, bootable status. Off. Defaults, home, yes. Format the partition, no. Okay, done. Continue. Swap. Okay, right? All that looks good. Root, which is great. Everything looks good there as well. Done. And this should be bootable. And this should be EFI. Right? Done. Okay. So EFI, root, swap, home. What else could it want? That should not. Ow. Look at that. Somebody in somebody in chat knows what's up. No swap. Alright, we'll leave this. Just in case it wants to create one, 
the rest is good. So we have our EFI partition, we have the root, we have our home set, everything should be good. Um, and this is set as bootable, right? Let's hit continue, let's see what happens. Finish and write. It, I don't know, it really wants me to create a swap file, but let's, let's just hit continue again. <laughs> this is such the this is the greatest live stream ever. Oh my god. Uh how embarrassing. All right. Guys, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to just see what the guided looks like. I know it's going to force me into LVM. I don't really want to do that, but you know what? Let's let's just do this. Um actually we'll go back. We'll just delete. Delete. Automatically partition the free space. Continue. Separate home partition. Let's just do all in one. All right, so this is what it created. Yeah, I figure what we'll do, guys, is we're just going to do the all-in-one just like this. And then once it boots into the system, I'm going to take my old F-stab, put it in, and remount all these drives and just say, forget it. We'll just do it how Debian wants it done here. I, on Arch, I know I, I could have just gone through command line and had no issues, but this GUI is kind of funky, as you guys saw. I was doing all this. These are marked for formatting as well, so the heck with it. We'll just... We'll just set this up. Actually, let's uh, go back, finish, write. No part, damn it. You know what, forget it. I don't even care about UEFI now. You guys, should I go back? Let's take a vote in chat. EFI or no EFI? Yeah, so far this switch has been awesome, by the way. I love Debian. I've only installed Linux like a hundred times. <laughs> and the guided GUI install is horrible. I think we got EFI, guys. <laughs> all right go back to menu and resume partitioning yes that's awesome all right let's delete these partitions again the guided setup steered us wrong Man, I don't like this. Yeah, Arch is easier. I'm just gonna say that right now. I would have already had it installed. We've been sitting at a desktop right now. Good night, Debian. What the WTF, man? Like I used your auto installer. It didn't have EFI. I booted into a UEFI installer. So obviously I need it. Yeah. Lord. Go 
Quebec. Primary. Beginning. All right, I'm just going to do it as if I was an arch without any of this nonsense. Do not mount. Boot. Boot on. Done setting up. Continue. That's not right though. This should be EFI. I'm gonna have to. Pick, I'm, I'm disregarding chat for a little bit, guys. Let me just figure this out. Um, all right. This is the actual. This is the actual setup. I set it up as EFI. I marked it bootable. They're both set to format. Um, I made one root device. I have not set any home directories. I figure we'll fix that after the install is done. Mount the home directory in EFI or mount the home directory using fstab after installation. Right now, I just want Debian to install, and this should work. Correct. Do we have anybody in chat that says this should not? Oh, hell. Gu GUI requires a swap file. You have to use swap? Oh, that's stupid. Oh, my God. All right. All right. I'm going to just do it like this. I just want the damn thing to install now. <laughs> but when I do it like that, This is so stupid. This is how it should look. But there's no bootable flag. Yeah, it's not going to work with an LVM. Debian for noobs, man. It is. I am a total noob when it comes to this. Uh Although I'm up to 220 viewers right now. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't use swap usually. So. Oh, that is hilarious. All right, we're going to try just straight manual one more time, guys. Just because um, I really want to do it like this. So we're going to do a primary beginning. This should be EFI 300 megs. Boom, bootable on, done. Okay, next one. We're gonna do create new partition. We'll go ahead and make this 230. 230 gigabytes, continue. Primary. Oh, uh, this is awesome. Mount options default. Typical usage. Oh, that's fine. So EFI, we have the root. Next partition should be swap because you guys say GUI Debian requires swap. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let sit here. I'll let chat catch up, and let me know. Ugh.
Yeah, so on Arch, I would normally set it up, the EFI partition, do the root, uh, I would mount the root one, and then I'd route, mount dash boot to the EFI partition, and then I'd continue the installation. So it would mount, but the Debian guided installer is just completely retarded. No home, dash home. Well, it shouldn't really matter on the dash home, right? I mean, I already did the the actual mount point forward slash. It should just dump everything into there. But if we need home, I can I can put that over here. Yeah, mount point home, keep a d existing data. Everything is good there. Done setting up. All right, so we have home and root. Anything else? Any other, anything else before we try it again? How long is this stream going for? We're at 42 minutes, guys. 42 minutes I've been sitting guiding partition disks. If anybody from Debian ever watches this, fix it. Seriously. This should not be rocket science. I can do Arch in literally under five minutes. <laughs> what is the deal, man? Oh my God. All right, go back to detect this, someone's saying. First, I'm going to just try this. This should work. I mean, everything's set up. Except this guy right here. We'll just go ahead and put it as a swap area, too. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put a swap, just so we have it. Yeah, so we'll just have the swap. We'll have the root. I mean, this is pretty much everything any Linux install needs. I mean, I'm not using any LVMs or logical. We're, we're gonna just try this. This is silly. So this is the changes we're making. These, all these are just that one specific drive. I can't do detect and just do automatic partitioning because it completely mess everything up. And I can take out the swap later. I don't really care. So all these changes look good. Let's hit continue. And usually this would fail right here. Yeah. You can try <laughs> Debian fail to install the system. <laughs> ah. Oh my God. That is hilarious. Oh my God. All right. Go back to detect this. I'm following, um, God, who was it in chat? Let me, let me scroll back. Somebody in chat said, go to detect this. He probably already left. Oh, man, that is hilarious. We're going to do detect this first and then go back into the partitioning, and we're going to see what happens. I'm, I'm just looking right here at the chat. That's what I'm doing. When I'm looking down, when I'm looking up, this means I'm actually focused on the actual install. Right now, I'm just looking at it. I'm just amazed at how bad this installer is. Um, These are all set up. Maybe it's the home partition because that is something I didn't erase. 
Let's just take this out. Do not mount. And let's go ahead and divide this guy up. Uh, partition size, let's go ahead and do 200. Thanks, David. I appreciate the super chat. All right. And then for this, we're going to create the new partition. And we're going to do a 30, 30 gig primary. And we're going to put it as home. Done setting this up. Continue. All right. So from here, all these will be formatted for the most part. This, I don't know why it says K next to it, but. We're just going to be doing it all on this one drive and then we'll fix it after install and see if it takes because it's saying there's another installation detected, which I just don't see that happening. So no, we don't want to use it. Yes. The target file system contains files from a past installation. These files could cause problems with installation problems. You proceed, you will not be a... No. Continue. 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 Okay. We absolutely have to format these drives, but uh, it's just not allowing me. So, let's erase it. Continue. Erase. Yes. Done. I think you have to go through each one of these and we're just going to we're just going to have to do that. That is such crap, but Yeah. I I'm going to go ahead and format this. I have 16 gigs. I don't really need a swap. So it's it's kind of funny. So just in case anybody's wondering what's going on, we're 15 minutes in. We have done the different partitioning. The reason why I don't use the automatic is I literally have five or six disks. And if you do the automatic partitioning scheme on that many disks, it causes all kinds of crazy stuff to happen. And it just gets divided up everywhere. So on this, I am just racing everything. I want to do these manual installs and it forces you to do basically a DD and write zeros to everything to actually format it using the GUI, which is just complete silliness, but hey, whatever. I think, Serge, you're absolutely right. I think any other installation right now would have already been finished. Arch, Gen 2, Slackware, I would have already been installing packages already. Uh, it's just ridiculous that the Debian GUI is this messed up with the partitioning scheme. Um, I don't know what the deal is. I do need a drink though, I'll tell you that. Dude, it might be 10 hours later doing the partitioning. Yeah. So yeah, just just so everybody knows, um, yeah, this is my main machine. If you're new to this chat, it is all of my drives, all of my data, and I'm streaming it through a secondary machine that's sitting down here. That's that's how I'm doing the chat and all this stuff and handling it. But this is my main machine, so. 
That's why I don't just do automatic and wipe everything out. If I, it's if you guys want to see an install on a VM, I can totally do that. It would take probably 10 minutes. We'd have a 15 minute stream and we could have done it like four or five times probably by now. Uh, that's how bad this is right now. It's it's so silly. They don't do just like a MKFS dot, you know, whatever the scheme is and just push it through a regular format, you know, ext4. It takes like five seconds on any other installation. Uh, Debian, horrible, horrible guided installer. Uh, I, I almost feel like dropping down. I already have the second machine set up down here. We'd be better off just doing command line than watching all these zeros being written. But whatever. Yeah, for the EFI install, I did 300 megs. I didn't do a gig. Yeah, the Debian GUI is very, very picky. Uh, I'm watching the comments down here, and some people are like, hey, you should use Gparted and all these other things. Debian requires you to mount them all, and then if it has any kind of failure during the installation, it requires you to erase it using this method. I, I did not see another quick format method which is just silly. I don't know why you'd need to write zeros to everything. I don't really care. So, uh, it's weird. Yeah, Debian's uh, er erase with zeros by default is just so archaic. Could you imagine, this is only a 200 gig drive, guys, and it's an NVMe, so it does it pretty quick. But imagine doing this on like a terabyte old old regular drive. We'd be sitting here for literally 30 minutes, an hour, maybe two hours, just watching it write zeros. Uh, so Debian's installer has some extreme flaws to it. <laughs> yeah. I think the the key to this story, guys, is you'd be better off doing the command line instead of the guided system. As I said, I would be far done with Arch by now. So uh, using their GUI, I don't think anybody uses their GUI. The, the Debian purists out there, I probably goes ahead and just does it from command line if they have a huge setup like I do. I couldn't imagine them doing this type of thing. It's just crazy. Uh, as far as EFI partitions in 500 megs or 300 megs, most people say use 500 megs, but honestly, I've done literally probably 100 UEFI installs with EFI partitions. The most usage those partitions have seen is maybe 50 to 100 megs. I've never seen more than 100 megs in an EFI partition. 300 is far than enough. Uh, 500 megs is fine as well. I, I I don't really care. Whether it's 300 or 500, it shouldn't matter. Uh, thanks, thanks, Brad. I think we're gonna just do that if uh, it's already close close enough. Might as well wait. I don't really care at this point. But yeah, writing zeros to an SSD is always a bad idea. Uh, probably about an hour.
Yeah, this is definitely entertaining, guys. Because like I said, it would be hilarious if I raced everything on my computer. By far, super entertaining. Oh no, that was my daughter. It was in the picture. Yeah, once this thing installs and I get to just regular old Linux, guys, it'll be fine. It's just their GUI is so wacky, especially the partitioning portion of it. That's that's where we're having this hang up. So, yeah, when I say an hour, is once we actually get to actually install this thing, it'll be fine. It is making me sweat. Watch this thing. Delete everything. <clears throat> Be awesome if it deleted all my data and you guys got to see me cry on stream. You're welcome, Steve. I enjoy making videos, man. Doing this is just kind of what I live for, man. Yeah, hoodie's coming off. We're going to do this thing. <laughs> Debian doesn't support it. BME drives. <laughs> that would be awesome. If that's true, that'd be hilarious. No, man, he's punking you. You're getting trolled. <laughs> uh, yeah, I might take a break, man. We might have to. We might have to have some intermission during this install stream, and I'll just leave it on wherever we leave off, and then pick it up later tonight. I think. I think the thing missing here is at least five or six drinks prior to starting this, because my arch install. I think I finished that in like twenty minutes. So, I think that might be the. The key ingredient to all this. Yeah, it, it, this also, the GUI might actually, because when I did the guided on the, all the free space on that disk, it said, hey, it wanted to do, uh, it wanted to partition a certain way, but it didn't include an EFI partition, even though we booted into this from UEFI. So that could be an issue. Debian 9 GUI installer just might be bugged in that regard. So we've formatted this, formatted that. Um, Here's the home directory. This is only 30 gigs, so we'll go ahead and just erase all the data throughout, and we should be good. Um, this shouldn't take very long. Oh, Chris, man, we're an hour in, and you have missed me messing around in the GUI installation partition for the past hour. So you, you really haven't missed anything <laughs> other than me making uh, a fool of myself trying to use the Debian 9 GUI. Oh my God, it's been horrible. Yeah, if this fails guys, I'm going to command line. I'm just gonna be like, forget Debian 9 GUI install. That's gonna be it. I'll just pull up their wiki page. We're gonna do it from command line. Because I will get Debian installed one way or another today. So typically how I've done it in the past is I would, on Arch, when I was doing UEFI, I would go ahead and mount the dash boot to that actual partition. 
the EFI on here, um, we'll see how, how this goes. I'm curious. It's a good question. All right. So we've officially formatted these. I don't think we even need to bother with the swap. I think we can go ahead. Let's go ahead and try it. We've erased that entire route, wrote zeros all the way across. The EFI is marked as bootable. This is not. Um, so I'm seeing a bunch of chat saying K and F. Uh, I don't see a spot to toggle that to, oh, here we go. Yes, format it, done. Yeah. And there is no format option on this one. Done. No format option on this one. Anything else before I try and hit the go? The only thing I have questions about is bootable. Since I am not mounting the EFI to the dash boot partition, I imagine this needs to be changed to bootable, at least logically speaking. I think it probably should be uh, bootable. So let's try and toggle this on or go back. Oh, no, it doesn't allow me to change this. Okay, good. So it did not allow me to change this to not bootable and I can't toggle this to F. So as far as the partition scheme, all this looks good from um, a manual standpoint. All right, here we go, guys. Well, an hour in of the manual partitioning. What, we're an hour and four minutes in of the manual partitioning. So let's, let's do this. No mount point is set for NVMe. Do you want to return to the partitioning? No. We're, we're, we're just not even going to worry about that other portion. Right changes, yes. So it's partitioning. <sighs> To boot EFI. Oh, hell. Failed. Do you want to resume from the... <laughs> what? No. It already failed, guys. What? Well, if the EFI is not going to work, it's not going to work, you know? Oh, my God. That is hilarious. I'm dying here. Uh, you need to have a swap partition ex equal to your memory or above. I have 16 gigs of memory. If you don't have a, at least a 16 gigabyte swap partition, you can't hibernate. All right. So here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm, this is my last ditch effort. And then I'm just going to say, forget it. We're, <laughs> we're going to go to something else. Go back to Arch. <laughs> uh, this is hilarious. All right. Here we go. We're gonna do guided partitioning. Let's see what guided takes us. Use the entire disk. Okay, so this is what the guided gives us. It gives us the F. It looks like the EFI partitions right here. It did everything as we did it. Let's go ahead and hit continue. It left these free spaces at the beginning and end using the guided. Uh, let's hope it doesn't wipe out all my data. Um, Oh, let's go back. Let's finish and write. 
Right changes, yes. Oh my god. I used the guided and it still failed. Uh. <sighs> I mean... Alright. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna abort the install. Yes. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's better to just abort. We've had so much, oh, so much stuff. And we're not even going to use UEFI. I'm just going to use Legacy. Maybe something with Debian. I, I saw someone say, I thought they were joking or trolling, but hell. I, I at least want to get the graphical inter installer to work. So we're not going to use... Whoa. What? What is this? <laughs> oh. I don't I don't even know what to do with this. I I really don't. All right. Yeah, I don't have a proprietary BIOS or anything here, guys. <sighs> Good night. All right. Let's boot into the live environment. I mean... Let's go take out the live environment and try Gparted and see what happens. So it's not a BIOS setting. I just came from a UEFI install from Manjaro. So there is no way it's a BIOS setting. I, I booted from UEFI before multiple times i've used it um i don't have to use it but i don't care either way um so the live installer is working i uh, don't have g parted Ugh. Oh, come on. <sighs> you know what? Let's go control F2. We'll just go old school with it, guys. I'm sick of this. Um, I'm 
VME in one. Oh, sorry, Heath. I, I've been just trying to do that. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> go ahead and go ahead and post it, Heath. Let me let me catch up with my chat here. I've been just trying to wipe this out because I'm just like beyond beyond upset with this. This is ridiculous. I'm holding off on the install just a second. I'm going to catch up on my chat. Yeah, I'm starting to lean towards corrupt installation media, but... Very, very weird. All right. All right, we'll pop back into here. We'll go into KDE Partition Manager, like everyone's saying, and we'll go from there. Um, I'm going to take GB2's advice and download the Debian uh, 10 Buster Net install image because at this point, um, I just don't have a good feeling about this. Uh, yeah, I totally should be drinking though right now. Right? Man, this install could not have gone worse, babe. Everything that could go wrong did. Like, I didn't even make it past partitioning the disks. That, that hadn't happened in a long time. No, no. I'm still on the stream. That's just crazy. No, I'm not bailing. We'll, we'll get it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and update the repositories while we wait here, guys. But I'm also gonna go ahead and download new installation media just because this is this is ridiculous. So All right, we'll let that go, and I'm going to go ahead and download the live installer.
Yeah, I'm starting to believe you on the NVM, NVME is not supported natively. Uh, that's amazing. I could not imagine that they don't support every hard drive out of the gate. That's, uh, that's almost, uh, yeah, that's, that's just crazy to me. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know what's up with Debian not supporting NVMe out of the gate. That almost makes me want to just abandon it. Um, but I told everybody I was going to do Debian vanilla. And I, I want to stay true to my promise there. This is the live installer up here, guys. This isn't what I'm doing, so. Anybody new to chat saying do an update, upgrade, um, this is the live installer. All right, let me. Yeah, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, my, my, I have a kitten too, so he's really all over the place in the background. All right. All right, we're going to give this another go, guys. I'm going to I'm going to just reboot into it. We're going to try it again. And then if it doesn't work, uh I'm going to redownload a different Im different image and then we're going to try it. So, let's go ahead reboot this PC. Um and give it another whirl. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Almost three hundred people. Oh, it's right here. All right. One thing I have to point out here is UEFI shouldn't show up like six times. That's kind of ridiculous. Let's try the non-GUI version. So this is more my wheelhouse. I think uh, this just feels more natural to me. So I don't like GUIs at all. I like to just use my keyboard for Linux install. So let's just go ahead and just do the basics here and load this up and do it all in non-graphical. Oh, crap. All 
All right. Um, Heath, you can just send it to my email, uh, contact at christitis.com. Or post it here, I don't care. All right, we're gonna definitely Google it. Uh, NVMe drives, I don't think, are natively supported on Debian 9. Oh, that is wild to me, but let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna Google it. If anybody else wants to Google it as well, let me know about NVMe drives and Debian 9, because apparently there is an issue with it. There's no way this failed two times in a row like that. Okay, top Reddit hit, installing Debian 9 on a Samsung 960 Evo NVMe drive, which is exactly what I'm using. It doesn't support it with CSM enabled. You absolutely have to do CSM. Oh my God. All right, I'm going to look for Dawn's solution. I already actually used the full ISO, Dawn. I actually is a 2.4 gig fully integrated ISO, not the net installer is what I'm actually using. So that's not the solution. But what I am reading is... You have to disable CSM entirely. You can't uh, boot to UEFI when using an NVMe with Debian 9. I mean, that's just bonkers to me. Oh, let me, let me check my email real fast. <laughs> Thanks, David. I appreciate it, man. All right, so David just sent me something on an email and it said, an update for W9 is scheduled for Saturday, February 16, 2019. As of now, it will include the following bug fixes. They can be found in stretch-proposed updates, which is carried by all official mirrors. In this, let's see.
Yeah, this is okay. All right, we're dumping UEFI, guys. That's the end of it. Um, after reading this, I think it's only going to work if I go into my BIOS and we disable some stuff. So let's go ahead, re reboot, and we're going to ditch CSM, which is allows basically legacy and UEFI to boot at the same time. So we're going to go into a BIOS setup. Oh. And we're going to come into here and come down to CSM support, which um, let me go here or here. Let's see. Disable CSM support, enable, let's see. Secure boot, disabled. That's so messed up, but hey, I get it. Just checking for any other settings in here that might cause a problem. All right, I think we're good. Um, all I had to do is disable CSM support. We should be able to install now. Good night. Yeah, we're committed now. It's going to happen. One way or another, it's going to happen. I'm not even going to bother with the GUI anymore. Um, doing a bunch of Linux installs from work, I just feel much more comfortable doing it from um, this type of prop. So, yeah, I saw it, David. That was actually a MBR, uh, not GPT. So I'm, I'm curious to see how this will work. I think I can do it just fine. So we're not gonna change anything on this one, except uh, the only thing we have changed so far is um, disabling CSM in BIOS. So I'm really curious to see if this is the actual problem. Yeah, I'm just going to do the guided just to see what happens. I want to see if it actually just fails again right at this spot with CSM disabled, which it did. So, huh. All right. That's fine. Well, this time we're going to enable CSM, not boot to UEFI, and we're going to just try straight up legacy without UEFI. So ridiculous.
One thing I'm noticing, have you guys seen that each time I reboot my PC after doing a failed install, it shows UEFI and it shows the actual disk on this USB? We might have corrupted our USB as well, so. Yeah, Debian is awesome. Yeah, see all these UEFI entries? Oh my god. It's ridiculous. So we're going to try this. Um, we're not going to do the graphic installer because last time it messed up the screen. Yeah, this is great for learning. I just wish I wasn't learning in front of about 300 people right now. But then again, I mean, it's kind of cool. At the same time, a lot of people can point their fingers and go, told you, <laughs> the Debian installer sucks. And there's probably a reason why Linus Torvalds was like, hey, I tried to install Debian and it didn't work. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. I think Debian's going to be just fine. Yeah, it's totally ridiculous. I, I agree with Adam down there. <laughs> this is the longest install I've ever done in my life of uh, Linux, period. This is ridiculous. Absolutely beyond insanity. All right, here we go. CSM enabled, redoing the partition skim. Oh my God. Whoa, in the hell. Oh my God. Ugh. <laughs> oh. For real, this is happening. All right, I'm downloading a new installer. I think the complete USB ISO is jacked. There's no way it has failed this much. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh... <laughs> oh, wow, oh my God, what? All right. This drive, I'm formatting, we're gonna redo. Um, I'm gonna download the net install of Debian testing. Oh, I have, I have literally 30 other distros. Yes, I could go ahead and do that and whiz through this. But the fact, I, for the past like month, I've said I've been installing Debian and there's no reason I can't install Debian. It's just, no, I'm not giving up on it. I'm just not. Because you can look through a thousand YouTube videos, probably a 10 to 20 of mine showing installs of various Linux distributions. And I want to use Debian. And damn it, I'm going to. So we're not giving up. We're not. So let's see here. You're going to have to look at the... Deal. I gotta reposition here and download some stuff. All right, we're gonna download Debian testing net install. All right. Thanks, Red. Appreciate it, man. You guys are just seeing me dying out here. This is awesome. Ugh.
All right, it's downloading right now. It'll take an in crazy amount of time, guys. We got about 30 more seconds before it's finished downloading. <laughs> so I can need to download something to burn this thing on because this is not my usual PC. The net install will fail. You need disk. The XFC image stable. All right, I read Don's thing here. He said the net install will fail. It's already downloaded. Let's just go ahead. We, we already have it installed. Let's see if Don there is right or not. Because this is going to take maybe a total of a couple minutes. And we've already invested... I don't even know. I don't even know where my counter is. Way too much time. <laughs> we're we're going to say like an hour and a half or something. Let's see. How long has the stream been live? Hour and 38 minutes right now. So we've already invested this much time. We can wait another couple minutes and see if the net install. I want to just rule all this stuff out. I'm just generally curious at this point why this isn't working. So I have the Debian testing AMD64 net install. Let's go ahead and flash this guy, and then we're going to put in this computer, we're going to reboot, and then we're going to do it. And we're going to, I'm going to do exactly like this. I like not using the GUI. It's a little bit faster just doing the non-graphical. So we're going to just finish this flash. It's doing it right now. You guys can't see it because it's on the streaming computer, but uh, we should be good here in a couple seconds. So the net installs only 300 and some megs. Yeah, it's got to be, it's, it's going to end up being something just completely silly at the end of this. So I'm curious to see what it ends up being. I think the USB drive might be bad, guys. I'm having issues writing to it. <laughs> All right, that's not a problem. I got another one. All right, USB drive two. This guy, don't use. No bueno on that one. All right, we're starting on the new USB drive, and it is flashing. So anybody that's just joining, I've had this wonderful USB drive that we've been trying to install Debian 9 on using, and it has completely failed every single time. This giant red screen you see before you, we have gotten probably a dozen times so far. Um, yeah, no exaggeration. Oh no. Can you guys hear me at all? It might be the, okay. Might be the flash, let's see. All right, no problem, one second. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, so, ooh, come on, what the heck, thing. 
Could anything else go wrong with this stream? Oh my god. Ah, came back up. Oh, come on. Webcam froze up. Oh, hell. There I am, okay. Hey, we're back. <sighs> All right. At this point, we now have a brand new drive. Uh, the webcam froze up. So, uh, we've got some stuff happening. But we are back. Uh. Here we go. It's reading that. I'm going to go ahead and take this guy, put that over there. The stream's going back to the left side, and we are rebooting and trying us out. So we tried different installation media. We're doing a net install this time, not the full ISO as we did before. And um, we'll see what we get here. All right. We'll go ahead and do a UEFI install, because why not? And testing, so we're gonna do install. All right, no kernel modules were installed. This is due between a mismatch between the kernel used by this version of the installer and the kernel available from the archive. You're installing a work. Uh, no. What in the hell is going on here? Yes, yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, no Ethernet car detected. All right. We gotta go back. We gotta go back.
Yeah, the net install is not looking pretty so far, guys. Um, we need to learn load the kernel module somehow. Uh, it's not detecting any network hardware, so I can't. Yeah, it's not detecting any Ethernet card, so I have no way of loading the kernel module. And since I don't have any internet, I don't have any network card, I'm not able to load the kernel module from the CD because of some mismatch. So this installer that I downloaded is not going to work. Wonderful. So with that, that's okay. I put all my images on my local FreeNAS box, so don't worry, not a long way here. We're gonna take this guy out again, stick it over here on the streaming box, and we're gonna load it up with the full uh, image anyways that we were using that failed so many times. Oh, wow. I'm just wondering if anything else could go wrong with this. You know, I just shot myself in the foot by saying that, but <laughs> it's the truth. Wow. All right. Downloading the full version of Debian Live. I like KDE, um, hate it as much as you want. And we're gonna just put that over here and then we're gonna go ahead and throw that on our thumb drive and then we're gonna restart this whole thing another time. Is it? I mean, I've, uh, I mean we've got some time, it's gonna load this up. Let's, let's continue doing that. Um, let's just do that one. Nope. 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 Oh. Yeah, never mind. We're just going to do it. No, I'm not using stable, Don. Um, or actually, no, no. It is the stable live, Debian live 9.8.0. AMD. Let me copy this in the chat so everybody sees the image I'm using. This is what I'm using right here. This is 2.5 gigs. Does anybody have any arguments of using that image? I think this is a live stream of how not to install Debian. <laughs> or how to do it wrong. Uh, the the rewatch value of this, I, I'm going to leave it up just because so many people have joined. But God, this is just embarrassing. <laughs> you just couldn't do it any worse than this right here. Non-free ISO. Ah, <sighs> all right, let's see. I agree. I, I like non-free repositories. This is flashing, so we got like four minutes on the flash. Um, let's see what I can find online. Yeah, hopefully Total OS Daily is not here. He said it was going to fail. <laughs> and at this point, I want to just prove him wrong by actually getting it to work. But uh, it's funny. Debian 9 non-free ISO.
Okay, guys. I agree with you on the non-free packages. I absolutely have to have non-free packages because of the encoders, codecs, all that. I am going to re-download this, so um, it shouldn't take long. I have a really good internet connection, so it's 2.8 gigs. Right now, it's about 4 or 5 megs. It may freeze up the stream. I might be cutting in and out here. Uh, just know that's what's up. So, yeah. All right, intermission time while this downloads, and I'm going to get a drink, and I'll be back in three minutes, guys. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Slow internet. All right. Yo. Okay, I'll go check them out. gone back to windows now you guys can see it down here we still got about a minute left so this is the streaming pc um give me one more minute i'm gonna check up on something All right, movie server has gone down. The kids have let me know. So we've got to get that up and going here. We're almost done with this, and we'll start flashing. All right, I think we can load our flash device here. We go downloads. And flash. Yeah, this is just a really advanced version of Linux, guys. <laughs> nope. 
Pay no attention to the bottom left corner there. Yeah, that's what I'm actually streaming on. This is the kids' game in PC, so that's what it. Um, so that's what happened. Yeah, we had a problem with this installation media. It's caused a big hang up in everything. So now I'm downloading and flashing the non-free Debian KDE version, and we're gonna reboot the guy up top. Once this finishes, fin uh, once this finishes, we'll go ahead and flip back to it. Um, so that is what is going on here. Um, right now I'm on my ultra wide. This is actually the streaming PC that we're using. I have two giant desktops right next to each other here and kind of making a big mess, but I wanted to stream the actual install on my main PC and that's how this is all done. Um, what you're looking at right now is the Windows PC just for the streaming portion. This is my kid's gaming PC that I kind of hijacked because the laptop I had didn't work for this stream. Like I said, that's the only time you use Windows typically is for games. Um, it mainly loads up Steam automatically and other things. I just have everything loaded up just so we can do this stream. Um, hey bud, you should be able to hit retry. It should pull up now. Yeah, I rebooted uh, the media server. All right. It working? Okay, good. At least something's working tonight. <laughs> All right, that's good. I had to reboot the media server. It jammed up for some odd reason. I'll look at that later. So, downloaded all those. Um, come back to our live dashboard. And... We're good. All right. <laughs> all right i'm getting flack i'm gonna have to flip back over here this is flashing so we're gonna go bam so this is the actual main pc streamed to here using my other box which you guys just saw the other box um right here this is the other box which i'll throw that over here let's see so you guys can kind of see all the flashing. Yeah, on this next one, guys, I think we're going to just go ahead, boot legacy mode without, with make sure dis secure boots disabled. I'll go ahead and go back into BIOS one more time after this BIOS, or once this finished. Actually, I can go ahead and do it right now. I'm not on that PC. <clears throat> this is going to be finishing Flash in about a minute and something, so we'll leave it be and come over here. We are back in the BIOS. I'm going to go ahead and get all that ready. We got about a minute left on the flash. It's at 80% when I flipped over. 
Um, we just need to check to see. Secure boot. Let's see if that's somewhere in here. I always lose track of where it, where it is. Ah, with CSM disabled, secure boot pops up. But it's disabled, so. Yeah, it, we're good. So, we'll leave CSM enabled. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Download the XFC version just in case. Um, it's validating the USB drive now, and I'll go ahead and pull that up. Why not? I like having installed media just sitting there chilling. Just, just when I get bored, I can easily jump over to it. Yeah, it's almost a gig less than the KDE. XFC is so light. I love it. All right. It's downloading to validation says it's going to take two minutes. God, how slow is this USB drive I'm using? Oh, all right. Well, it's, it's working at least. Yeah, as far as Arch goes, I really love vanilla Arch. Once you get used to it and you learn all the what there is to learn about it, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> Peter, what do you mean I might start regretting leaving? I regretted leaving like an hour and a half ago when I was 30 minutes in and I was dying in front of you all repartitioning my drive for like the seventh or eighth time. Now we're two hours in. At this point, I'm like, hey. There we go. Yeah, it looks like the stream came back alive, which should be good. I'll be back in one minute. We're finishing the verification, and it's also downloading XFCE ISO just in case this one fails.
All right, here we go, guys. We are back. Let's see where we're at. Uh, XFC finished downloading too, so we have that. We have our installation media. We are successfully flashed. We'll go ahead and eject it just because. All right, media, good luck. How's it going, Alan? Oh man, I could really use a beer right now. Oh my God, sounds so good. All right, we're back. Got my stream up, but uh, let's do this. All right, so it's been two hours. Anybody new coming into the stream, you have missed absolutely nothing. We've just been sitting here chatting for two hours. <laughs> Ain't far from the truth. All right, here we go. UEFI. Oh, wait, wait, no, no. We're not doing UEFI. We're going to just do regular. Disregard. I'm rebooting again. We don't want to do UEFI. And we're back at it. You know what they say, 13th time's the charm. That's totally a saying. What are you saying? <laughs> it is a really sad stream. <laughs> All right, guys, only another 12 hours to go before we finish this Debian install. Any second now. All right, that looks good. Here we go. Come on, make it past like 10%. Get a 10%, it'll be an improvement. Come on. Four percent. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, please. Keep going. Go. Go. Yes, 6%. I think we're good. We're good, guys. Look at that. Just needed the right USB drive all this time. <laughs> Watch it fail. <laughs> be awesome. <laughs> Stream has ended and you just see me flipping my desk. That's what would happen if this failed right now. 
Oh, man. Ah. It kept failing. The USB drive corrupted, so the last two hours we've been trying to install Debian 9 using a corrupt USB drive. So it has been a super entertaining stream where I've completely looked like a fool uh, the entire time. So that is what has happened. If you're just now joining, it has been an action-packed, me constantly back and forth partitioning, rebooting, and things just going to crap. Uh, everything that has could go wrong pretty much has, and it has just kept going over the past two hours like that. So now we have proper installation media, and you know we're looking good. So, hey babe, do we have any wine? No, we're out of wine. We might have to take a break here, guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it should, once it finishes copying from the USB drive to uh, the NVMe drive, this should fly, guys. So the system we're doing it on is my main system. This isn't a VM or some crap. So once this finishes copying, <laughs> we should see, start seeing a lot of progress fairly quickly. I honestly thought this whole stream would go about an hour, and it is two hours and 16 minutes in right now. So pretty amazing. And if The Verge is watching, I have a new video on how to install Linux. Um, and you're more than welcome to license it for me for a trivial fee. I just want to throw that out there because I know you guys are looking for that type of video. And this would be perfect for you. Yeah, I'm sorry, Debian. I need to write them a apology letter for this stream. Ugh. All that, just a bad USB drive. Wow, there's two hours of my life. Oh man, I'd go for anything right now. Babe, do we have any rubbing alcohol? <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. Yeah, <laughs> the internet thinks I'm an alcoholic. Uh, hey, anybody that's stuck on this stream for the last two hours watching me try to install this, They'd be drinking, too. They probably are already drinking. <clears throat> this is the most entertaining loading bar screen you have ever seen when doing Linux. <laughs> no, I, I don't even hear your game. Yeah, when the kids were playing Hollow Knight earlier, I could barely hear it. Um, so Debian by default uh, doesn't have that. So uh, what you need to do to make sure your user has super user privileges, go su space root or just su in your terminal. Once you're on the root, then you can apt git sudo or i don't even think you need to app get sudo i think it's actually there you just need to add your user to the sudo group i'll show you here in a minute we're about to we're about to get going here oh let's see
So what mirror do I want to use? Actually, let's go back. I guess we'll just use. <laughs> yeah, who's the guy that mentioned corrupt installation media? That's awesome. <laughs> oh man, that would have been awesome. Dual streams, that would have been great. I'll I'll make sure to set it up for the kids because my wife actually has a computer right next to me. I could stream the Hollow Knight gameplay while you guys watch me struggle with an installer of Debian. <laughs> Installation medium gone. We are now cooking, guys. Two and a half hours later. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Not Windows! Oh! Uh, oh, that's hilarious. No! What happened? What happened? Oh no! Uh, yeah. You guys didn't see that. There was not Windows on this computer. Whoa, what happened there? Oh, okay. I got copyright protected content. My USB device apparently showed up on the stream. That was weird. All right. Let's uh, go into our boot devices and make sure our Linux device is booting in the correct order here. All right. Save and exit. Let's see what we get. All right, yes, haha. -ha. So it already configured it with the Windows 10 devices and other stuff that's on my computer as well. So we're good. Ooh. I'm seeing a black screen. Okay, well, 
That did not work out, guys. Ah. No password all, I believe. No, no password. Yeah, I think that's right. Actually... Yeah, so I didn't have any... any any display on this, so that's not good. Um, APT sources. And I want to just go, I think I can just change these to, let me look this up real fast. Or Buster, I want to go ahead and configure my sources to Buster. So one second here. Look at the generation. Yeah, I just not feeling that. So let's see. The saga continues. Just double checking here, guys. Actually, instead of testing, can I use Buster instead of testing so it'll automatically switch over to Buster? I think I can. Change to Buster. That's what I thought. I, I'm pretty sure I thought I, I thought I saw that. So I think I can just do Buster. Let's see. That'd be awesome. Oh my god. All right. I'm gonna let the stream catch up. Look at my file here. Does all that look right to you guys? If anybody, speak up. Uh. Oh. Yep. Somebody mentioned it. Buster. All right. 
All right, and All right. All right. All right. We're good. We're going to continue on now. I saw you guys as everything. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. It's Buster Dash updates, I believe. You are right. Think. Ah, oh, heck with it. Let's let's just go ahead and do a APT update and see what we get. Uh, one of them is aired out, so we'll come back and fix that. Uh, God, it's all kind of running together here. Some Okay. System cache was updated, but some errors were detected, which might lead to missing metadata. Refer to Verbo's log for more information. Oh. It's still going, what the heck. Doubly named username right now. Yeah, I should have commented those out. We'll fix that here in a minute. <laughs> uh. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll order it. It is so stupid. I agree. It's completely retarded at this point. But right now, it's more, a, yeah, it's more of a, a you know, a, you just absolutely have to get it done at this point. There, there's just no, there's no going back, guys. There's just no going back. We, we're going to get this. We're just going to get this done. I said I'm going to do it. I get it done. That's what happens. So we're going to get this going one way or another. We will have working up to date Debian Buster. Debian 10. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. True story. We will have it installed.
It will be installed. Ah. Yeah, so the fix with that is when I mess with the sources list, I just needed to do an apt clean and then an apt update and then an apt upgrade. And that should be good. Once this upgrades my kernel, I should have my graphics support. Um, I'm running a Vega 64, so when it booted to the desktop, all I got was a black screen. I did not get any graphic interface on the initial boot, so I'm hoping upgrading to Buster We'll fix that. We should be on, I think, 4.19. Uh, I forget what subversion they're on right now, but it's 4.19 is the base kernel. And that should give us Vega 64 support, which in turn should allow me to use Debian. <sighs> yeah, we're, we're in the home stretch right now. I think everything else works out of the box. At this point, I think Arch works out of the box is what I'm going to start saying. This is by far the worst install I've ever had. And most of that is from the installation media. You know, I'm not going to knock all of Debian on this one. Most of it was just the corrupt USB drive, literally two hours and like 10 minutes or some crap. We wasted on the corrupt installation media, which was awesome. Um, so now it's it's just updating everything to the Buster uh, Debian 10. Once it's finished, we should be good. I'm probably going to take a break here in 30 minutes, and then I'm going to leave everything as it is, and then resume the stream here. You know, probably like three or four hours. You know, later tonight, uh, I want to get some dinner with the family and kind of hang out, maybe watch a movie, and then uh, maybe pick this up later tonight and do it. So uh, we got about another. 10, 20 minutes of this, and I'm gonna go ahead and order some dinner and go pick it up. Yeah, we're progressing, man. It, Chris, it ended up being broken installation media. You know, of course, that's what it ended up being. <laughs> Uh, but I think we all learned something here. It was a valuable lesson that I think everyone can walk away going, wow, if I constantly see this, probably go ahead and remake my installation media. You know, one of those things. I'm central time, so it's actually 5.25 uh, I'll put the order in now. It'll usually take about 30 minutes to prep it. So probably about another 30 minutes of streaming. And then I'm going to go ahead, freeze it. And we'll probably end it there and then pick it back up. And I'm going to shoot for, let's shoot for 10 o'clock central time. So that would be, we'll end in about 30 minutes, about four hours later. We'll, we'll take about a four hour break because Lord knows we could use it. <laughs> Later, David. Thanks for coming out, man. Appreciate you hanging out with me and seeing me struggle. Take it easy. See you later, man. All right, I put the order in. Be about 30 minutes, babe. 
Oh, yeah. You know, I'll just tell them when I get there. That way they can't forget. Yeah, I know. Uh, just upgrade. I did not run dist upgrade. I should have run dist upgrade. So, I think at this point, guys, we're sitting here. We're going to be watching this progress bar. I'm going to reboot, and then I'm going to have to run dist upgrade after this. And <laughs> we should be good. I, I think we're going to, after I run upgrade and then dist upgrade, we're going to reboot, and then I'm going to just leave it. And then pick back up in four and a half hours. So it's 5.30 my time right now. Pick it back up around 10 tonight. I'll stream it all. We'll finish out this stream. And I'll put it on YouTube too so you'll see the countdown and all that. And I'll just leave my main PC alone. Spend uh, some time with the fam and grab a bite to eat because I'm starting to get hungry. And I think we just call it here because nobody nobody wants to see a progress bar and I think everybody's seen this specific upgrade process about a billion times. I know I have, so. Yeah, yeah, Pac-Man's a little bit faster for sure, so. I, I'm probably going to have to wait like four days to download this video because it's approaching almost three hours and it takes YouTube forever to process these live streams. Yep. Thanks for coming out, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and shut down the stream here in a, in a couple minutes. I'm going to let everyone say goodbye and all that. There's a long lag time here. So I'm going to let this go for about another couple minutes and then shut it down. But thanks for coming out and uh, hanging out with me, seeing seeing this complete train wreck, dumpster fire of a Debian install that I've managed to mess up every which way you can mess up an install. But at the end of the day, we got it installed, we got it going, and I think at the end we're gonna I'm gonna be left with a really great workable product for a good year. But it was just a, a really fun. One time, and I probably, uh, I don't know if I would have stuck with it if I didn't have 300 people sitting there watching me install this thing. I might have just been like, yeah, not worth it. I'm going to come back at another time. <laughs> so uh, it was quite fun. And uh, just thanks a lot for coming out and hanging out because this is, this is a blast. And again, I'm going to continue this in four and a half hours at 10 o'clock. So if you can make that, that's great. I know some of the people, European time, you're probably going to bed and stuff. Um, because it's probably pretty late there. It's a little past midnight, I think, in the UK, so uh, or close to. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and break for four and a half hours, shutting down the stream right now. And hopefully, I'll, if you can make that stream, that's great. If not, I will end up... Uh, leaving and publishing all this and at the end of all this uh, probably three or four days from now I'll actually download the raw content and chop some of this up and actually make a more condensed video because I don't think anybody's really going to want to go back through and see three hours of me flailing around like a chicken with his head cut off but uh, at the same time it was a quite a fun adventure and I appreciate it you guys. So, peace out. I re really, really, I'm shutting the stream down right now. This lag time on YouTube sucks.